I'm not allergic to noise in images, but sometimes a noise reduction is in order. So, is the just launched DxO Photo Lab 8 the new king of the hill when it comes to noise reduction? Let's find out. Hi, it's Peter here, and we have to start with the disclaimer. DxO sent me this software with a license key that is valid for one year, and it is a beta version of the software. But most likely it is very close to the final version that is or has been just launched. Even though they sent me the software, they did not ask me to do this video, so they don't know that I'm making this or publishing this, and of course they have not t told me what to say on this video. However, I did attend their uh, briefing about the new software, and I also will have some affiliate links down below in the description uh, of this video. So if you are interested in buying the software, please use those uh, links that will support my channel. But let's start with my workflow before we get into the new stuff. I have mainly used DxO Photo Lab softwares as a plugin for Lightroom, because all my main editing I do in Lightroom, even though Photo Lab 8 is a full editing suit like the previous versions of them were too. But I have found that uh, I only need the uh, noise reduction and the optic modules that will fix some errors in the, uh, you know, how the image renders through the lens, all the little mistakes that different lenses have. And uh, DxO has the best lens modules or optic modules as they call them, because they actually test the real lens and the real camera. So they have combinations for lens and camera to make the image as good as possible without any, uh, you know, falls from the lens. And those two are the things that I mainly use. But now let's uh, talk about the new stuff. I took a few photographs around this uh, pretty strange place in Helsinki. Well, a abandoned mall is not a big thing in all over the world. But here, the thing is that there are still some businesses that actually are working inside this building, even though it's full of graffiti, it's full of uh, tags and stuff like that. And unfortunately, broken windows too. And, and you know, the inside places have also been broken, which is, you know, a sad thing. I don't know what they're going to do with this. Maybe they will tear it down in a few years. I don't know. But it's an interesting place to photograph. And I wanted to have some images with some colorful things in them. And at the same time, I could document this place for future reference. So how, how was it when I photographed it? I've been here before to photograph because it's constantly changing how it looks. And the first big new thing is the large live preview magnifier. One very good thing about this is that now you can actually see what's going on in the image. And uh, it will show you the noise reduction, exposure, clear view, smart lighting and tone curve. And, you know, it's a lot better than it used to be. And I think this, this is a big, big improvement in workflow. It makes, you know, seeing what you actually are doing a lot look better, especially the noise reduction where you can really see clearly what's happening to the image. And the second thing is the Luma curves. Now it's possible to adjust the tones without affecting the colors. There won't be any color shift. So if you want to add contrast without affecting the color, this is the tool. Of course, the traditional RGB curves are still there if you want to use those. But I think the Luma curve is great new tool to improve contrast in your images. And here you can see the difference between RGB curve and Luma curve. I think the Luma curve is a really good addition to the tool palette because it doesn't affect the colors. If I want to adjust the colors, I can do them locally, individual colors by the new Hue Mask tool, which will affect just that color, which I will uh, choose from the image. I think this works a lot, lot better than the RGB curves. And the next thing is the new lens softness correction algorithm. They've improved the lens uh, algorithm so that the softness of a lens will be improved uh, much more than it used to be. As I said at the beginning that uh, the lens, the optic modules are uh, handmade for every lens and every camera combination. So there are like tens of thousands, I think it's uh, over 80 or 90,000 different combinations. And that will correct the faults of the lens, which was one of the reasons I have been using it as a plugin in Lightroom Classic. And now that's been improved. And here you can see the difference. I used the exact same settings for 
uh, Photolab 7 and Photolab 8. On the left side is the Photolab 7 version and I only used uh, denoising, lens softness correction and distortion. The difference isn't really that big but if you look at closely to the sign, I hope you can see it here because of the YouTube compression, the PL8 or the Photolab 8 version is sharper and more clear if you look at the sign. So in these small details in an image it makes a difference and as you know the devil is in the details so it is improved. What do you think about these improvements? Please tell us in the comments down below what's your take on this. And then let's talk about the new XD2S noise reduction algorithm. It's an improvement from the older, older version XD2 which was something that I did not prefer. I preferred the XD version that was in, in uh, or before and it's still available even though they have the new one. And I used to recall on my on my photo shoot for this video because the XD2S does not support the X-Trans sensor from Fuji cameras yet. But they said that it will be available in the near future. So then I can test it with my XS22, uh, 22 XS22 so that it uh, so that I can see how good that uh, improvement is. If you try to make noise reduction it will use the XD2 algorithm. Is this any better than the, the previous one? And I can say it is. It has a lot better noise reduction and the biggest thing is that there are less artifacts than there was before. You can see these old images that I took about a year and a half ago here in Helsinki it made with OM2, uh, OM2, OM5 and it was ISO 6400. And as you can see from the comparison with the new one versus the older one and the newer one is a lot lot better. Look at there is no artifacts over here. So I think it is an improvement. Comparing the recall files is exactly the same thing. We we have a better noise reduction algorithm. Answering my question that I asked in the title of this, is this the new king of the hill when it, when it comes to noise reduction? And I would say yes. This will be my go-to software when I want to reduce noise. But don't forget that this is also a very good editing suite as a, as a whole software if, if you need one or, or been using the previous versions because you can upgrade it from version 6 to 7 and now I will check the prices so I've said them correctly. Uh, if you upgrade it from version 6 or 7 the price is uh, 99 pounds or 109 euros slash dollars. And if you don't have it yet then it is uh, 209 pounds and 229 euros last dollars. And these prices apply now when it's um, uh, launched. The prices may vary in the, in the future, we don't know. And then they also offer a bundle with the new software DxO Photolab 8 and the Filmpack 7. And let me check the prices. It's 249 in pounds and 299 in dollars and euros. So how do you feel about the new upgrade? Is this something that you might want and upgrade your 6 or 7. If you have 6 then I think you should but if you have 7 then of course it is how much you need the new tools and how much you need the better noise reduction. It's of course it's up to that. So don't buy anything if you don't need it but this is one of those upgrades that I recommend and I will be start using this version of course. Please let us know in the comments down below what do you think. And here is some more videos about DxO software. Bye. Thanks for watching and bye for now.